everybody, welcome to Sonic Talk episode, uh, was it, uh, 621, uh, and today uh, we're doing little things a little bit different. Uh, if you've been following, we did have the pre-show on Twitch, that's twitch.tv slash Sonic State, so we have the pre-show there. I'm also trying to merge the chat, so I just need to uh, uh, restream, so I'm trying to basically get, get my restream, so everybody will see everybody's chat in all the compatible chats, that's my concept. Whether or not it works, we'll see, but while we're talking about it, this is the show obviously to do with with um, music technology. Although streaming technology is becoming a thing these days because obviously everybody's doing it as they were, uh, as it were. So uh, I'm merging the chats, we'll see how you get on. It might be a complete mess or you might meet some new friends or you know have conversations across platform. It might be a beautiful thing or it might be a horrible messy thing. But um, yes, music technology, studios, recording, synthesizers, software, electronic music, uh, live production, whether it be for streaming or for, for concerts, although those are a little bit less these days. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, we are hot here today. Today I have the air conditioning on for the first time this year because uh, I'm burning, and you might see that my unsightly blemish is the results of a horrible cold sore I got from uh, being in the sun all day Friday last week uh, fishing, which was lovely, but the repercussions weren't so great. But uh, So I do apologise for my uh, rather unsightly appearance, but there's not much I can do about it. I could pos I'm not one of those people that would postpone the show. It'd have to be pretty bad, although apparently cold sores are in fact herpes, so I suppose that's not a very nice thing to think about. But, you know, uh, let's... Maybe I should change the subject. Dave, rescue me. Dave Spears, G4 Software. I've said too much. I've overshared, I feel. Dave's in his synth cave there. Beautifully lit today. And the camera's looking very rocking. Is that your regular camera or have you gone DSLR like the rest of us? No, regular camera. Just a different uh, internet connection. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Updated. Uh, yeah, for some... I did the... I did the... Yes, I did. I did the upgrade. Finally, on the Mac Pro. Uh, it was enforced. I bought one of those new iPhone SEs. And, uh, you know, when I hooked it up to the computer, I was running El Kurdistan or whatever it's called, 1011, <laughs> because I needed some things uh, that were 32-bit. And uh, I bought this phone, plumbed it in, and it said, do you want to make this phone work with your Mac Pro? And it was just one of those little innocuous... Yes, please. Know, games. Yeah, and I did. And then I went to uh, Final Cut Pro and went to output something. Crash. Again, crash, crash. Oh, dear. It didn't I update your phone. It updated your computer. Yeah. Thanks, it for did. that. Wow. <laughs> it did just put a whole load of um, yeah firmware in there. Uh, and the only way out of it was to upgrade to Catalina. So, yes, I've been in that mode for a while now. Ouch. And what a joy it is to... But well, I, I, I feel I feel like quite accomplished because we got the A10 Pro Mini, which is a streaming piece of hardware, and I was really looking forward to checking it out because Gaz is going to uh, uh, look at look at it, and he's. Um, but I thought I plugged it in to my new computer, and it said no, no. Well, I say new; it's 2060. It's new to me, anyway. Uh, so. Um, and it said, no, it doesn't work with this software. And I thought, oh, I'm going to have to do it. Because before that, I was actually on 10.12. So I was on Sierra. I wasn't even on high Sierra. I thought, right, I'm going to do it. So I went up to Mojave over the weekend, and it was joyous. Everything's fine so far. It all seems to work. But when I got in, Gaz had been over at the weekend, and uh, Andy had, had, let, had given him the ATEM. So I didn't, after all that, I never got to see whether it worked or not. <laughs> but at least I'm updated. So I will be able to join the club because uh, I'm only one behind everybody else. And it feels like someone in my position should probably have at least a current operating system at their disposal. I mean, we've got Windows 10, but no, I don't really use that so much. Anyway, Dave, lovely to have you. Uh, you. As ever, GeForce software and synth stuff and, you know, all of those things. And, and sports, you're starting to get like a bit of Brian Ferry locks going on there, actually. So, yeah. Ah, it's, this is amazing. I'll tell you what, I'm quite enjoying this lockdown thing because it is the only time a middle aged man who's losing a bit on the top, well, quite a bit on the top, is going to get an excuse <laughs> to grow their hair as long as they want. So, I've got the kind of, in fact, Chris referred to it as the reverse Bobby Charlton comb over. So, at the minute, it's all going back. My missus said, another two weeks and you'll lose that. be covered. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> well, lovely, <laughs> lovely to have you. Well, I mean, maybe we could form a sideline podcast, which are male grooming, although I wouldn't be much used to that looking at the state of me. Um, anyway, Rich Hilton's here too from uh, the States. Um, perhaps not, not, I'm glad you're not going for the comb over look, Rich. I think there's a certain point of, <laughs> there's a certain point at which it can't, it, it can do no good. But you know, you look, you look great as you are. So don't. Thank you. Thank you. I'm feeling well. <laughs> Good, I'm glad the, to hear yeah, it. State of the world. 
I try and keep and, it. Uh, no, I wouldn't be suitable. I wouldn't be suitable for a grooming show either. But uh, <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> anyway, Rich, of course. Uh, keyboards with chic although obviously not a lot of that going on live at the moment studio work and all those things so uh the new normal and uh yeah i guess this is lockdown if we're still in lockdown i mean most places in the world although some places are starting to open up which is kind of cool i guess if we're it's not all right we're in phase one uh phase one of revitalize open up whatever you call it um where there are very very limited contact situations like outdoors at a restaurant you can set up tables properly spaced and oh, right. serve food outside at a restaurant now some of retail has opened some of it has not been allowed to open yeah. um so it's our area has been has had a steady decline for over two weeks now so they that was the sort of baseline for whether or not you were willing to start considering relaxing and so it has and so they have and well, maybe, maybe there'll be some, maybe there'll be some gigs at some point in the future, but we'll have to see. But Rich, lovely to have you. I hope so. Um, and also, we have Mr. Charles Chicky Reeves. Look, I even got your new uh, URL. I didn't get time to spell check it. I hope that's right. Chickyandcoco.com. Yeah, that's it. Phew. Well, it, for that. It, I should explain. It, it's new only in as much as my sublime website and email and everything was hacked pretty horribly so uh, i had to take everything offline but uh chicky and coco is still good so that's yeah. a great way to reach me um and i'm i'm sort of halfway between between dave and and rich here because i'm british and american i have the outgrowth of hair but i'm covering up because i don't like the uh, quarantine cut that i have and uh and i'm sort of keyboards and oh well i was i tried to think of all the ways i'm sort yeah. of halfway but i'm like a <laughs> I'm the, yeah. I'm the uh, sort of the offspring between the two of you. There you go. There you go. Don't look at my hair. Look at look at my studio. There you go. That yeah. your TLA looks it's lovely. Great. This is a new angle. This is a new angle. I know because you've been doing lots of mixes and stuff and all of that kind of remote mm. workings working out for you as it is for a bunch of people. So uh, there is yeah. some good news and uh, there are some good news stories and uh, hopefully we'll be able to keep you entertained in this period of locking downness. So let's see what's the first thing we're going to look at. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to say we have actually competition uh, coming up. Uh, you can win a copy of Ozone 9 Advance. Thank you very much to those folks. Uh, we'll get on to that in a minute. Oh, yeah, video one. This is so this is a uh, what did I uh, let's do the free Valhalla reverb first because everybody in lockdown seems to like a big soothing ambient wash. I certainly do. And this one's free. Hello and welcome to this video on the Valhalla DSP Supermassive. <laughs> Ben uh, Divkid there did a great video. I also did some presets, uh, which there is a link for. Uh, let me see if I can find that. I'll put the link into the show notes. Hopefully this will stay in the super chat. Uh, the, not super chat. Uh, here's the link to the presets. Lovely sounding thing. Valhalla seems to be everywhere. Lots of people using it. Seems to be fairly flexible. I mean, you know... As I always say, I won't play the whole thing, but uh, Ben is often a guest on the show and he said, oh, give us a plug for my video. So I've done that and hopefully the links will be in the show notes and that'll all work with the, the chat. For some reason, it didn't stick last week. Valhalla Reverb. I'm going to come to you first, Chicky, because I remember you did a mix for me uh, mm -hmm. uh, very kindly of one of my tracks and I just, I'd just i actually just bought Valhalla Shimmer and I don't think you'd, you'd had it. You had it and then you did. So you, you kind of a recent-ish convert, although that was nearly two yes. years ago now. Yeah, but well, I've, now I've, I've got everything they make, pretty much. <laughs> All right. You see, and the, the you know the funny like I think this is a great, great move on their part because this will absolutely get people. Uh, it's 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 a gateway drug to the rest of the Valhalla stuff because, and even this thing sounds fantastic. This is great. I love this thing, and and it's like you could write an ambient track just using that and a sawtooth. And not much else. <laughs> it's, it just sounds really beautiful, and, and I don't know what it is. There's something, there is something about the way they do their algorithms. None of their delays sound like anybody else's delays. Although this does sound a little bit like Echo that's inside of um, Ableton Live. Uh, so they're they're quite quite similar, but this will do a lot more, and it, it sounds great. You know that it. Shimmer and I, I love their vintage verb. I use that on every single track. I use Shimmer on most tracks. This thing I've, I've only used it for a couple of days now. But I absolutely love it. It's great. I totally it and it's free. It's free. Yeah, I mean, what's what's not to like? 
I, I mean, I suppose the only thing that might happen is people will end up being uh, sort of... Uh, it's a bit like, you know, when everybody was using the same plugins because there weren't any others. There's that, yeah. it, it, it's going to be too populous. There's going to be too much of it. And everybody, be, actually, there was a really good video from uh, Rachel K. Collier, who's a Welsh a singer songwriter, tech kind of educator. Uh, I'll put the link in the show notes to her channel where she does five production tip, vocal production tips. And she uses a lot of Valhalla and a lot of uh, gating and rhythmic gating around her voice. And the production is really interesting techniques, but that's by the by. Yeah. I know, Rich, I know we spoke to you about the ambient noodle at Noodle Fest. You're, I know you kind of enjoy that whole space yourself but this is a no-brainer isn't it oh you're muted i think somebody gets a drink i'll take a drink <laughs> i'm gonna have go. a drink everybody take a but drink but mine's just water i'll have a drink uh no um yes i pulled it down loved it uh started it up started on the guitar with it and pretty much had to stop myself 20 minutes later and say all right you got to finish preparing for the show <laughs> um <laughs> If you're if you're gonna get anything else done today, because I just could have kept going, and uh, it was great. It's very nice. Sounds great. Fun to use. Uh, works well with. Uh, plays well with others. Um, I was using uh, Eventide's uh, Black Hole after it because I ah. kind of see it as an enhanced delay more right. than as a reverb. This thing, and I wanted a dedicated. I wanted something called like Black Hole. I, it was the first time I said, Black Hole is the place for this. And uh, and it sounded great. I'm just <laughs> looking just for the stop playing. Valhalla DSP. But, uh, yeah, I really wonder what the, what, what the Viking kind of connection is, because uh, uh, Div Kid in his, has got the, they've got a little Viking new, uh, um, doodah on it. Oh. Oh, uh, does anybody know? Do you know, Chuck? Uh, yeah. Well, Valhalla is, uh, is heaven for the Vikings. Yes. So it's, it, it gives the it gives the uh, sense of giant echoey halls full of shimmery goodness, eh, hey, Dave? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you're you're a a, a black you're an even tide and a, what's the other one that you use? I can't remember now. It's the El Capitan. El Cap Capistan. What's the who are those guys? I've forgotten. Oh, the oh, big I've sky. Got, uh, big sky. That's right. Yeah, I use the blue sky, the smaller one, and the um, Ventris that you talked me into getting. Oh yeah, that, but I did good. download this and used it immediately. I haven't gone into detail with it, but I thought, oh, if I've got a new operating system, I could get some new things. So I did this, and it was a couple of little, uh, what's that company, Clevinger? Clevinger? Oh, Clevinger, Clev yeah, yeah. Clevgren, Clev 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, they did a couple of little freebies, and I thought, right, I'm having those, that, and they're really good. Yeah, like this, yeah. I need time to explore it, but I like the simplicity of this. It just seems like really easy to use. I used it quite quickly on a track. I how, would, I, how would you give the, how would you give that stuff away because i mean isn't it are that are, are there, is it because that it's like there may be some of their older algorithms less finessed or i mean or is it just kind of do you know what i mean it's not like because it's it's a different thing when you do a, a scaled down version of your you know tube mixing desk as opposed to effects algorithms it's kind of a cure i guess i guess you might know i mean because you produce plugins and stuff i mean is there a way um, what would you do? How would you make the differentiate between free and paid for in this situation? You might, you might want to do uh, a freebie to, and then do a really good upgrade path for users to go up to something new and more elaborate that might be coming out. I mean, that was that was actually my thought that this you know might be behind this, but I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Right. Well, that's yeah. No, I suppose that does make sense. Does make sense from a uh, 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 well, I'm just trying to find. I keep spelling it wrong because I'm not concentrating. Vla, vla, hala, hala, vla. Okay. There we go. I think I got it now. There we go. Valhalla super massive. Super massive. Make some space. <laughs> yeah, it does look very simple, but it does look. I mean, their their interfaces aren't. You know, uh, they don't go for the what's the word that uh, where everything looks like the real skeuomorphic. They don't go for that, do they? They go for yeah. a very flat, sort of almost Ableton like thing, which is it's kind of cool. But yeah, go get it. I mean, this like you say, Chicky, it's the sort of thing with a sawtooth and that you can pretty much, and a freeze button. You can always get freeze machines, yeah. which is essentially yes. a sawtooth and a freeze. That that'll do give you yeah. similar and Valhalla. Maybe we can figure out a way. To, yeah. Anyway, all of that good stuff. Um, so um, what else was there in? Uh, oh yeah, now this was an, another big update. Or oh, this isn't an update, but it's it, it. Well, it is an update. It's not free though. So now this in is, Melodyne Five. New technologies for better results and less time. Experience a breakthrough in vocal processing with the new Sibilin detection. Sibilins and breaths are detected and marked automatically. 
and only changed optically, not acoustically, when notes are moved. This accords with the nature of the human voice, so the results sound particularly authentic. And you're spared all the snipping and slicing that was necessary before. Also with timing, the only thing stretched is what the singer would stretch. Ah, uh, well, all the snipping and the slicing, that sounds like the uh, mad scientist from, uh, from The Simpsons. Oh, no, it's not The Simpsons, it's the uh, future Futurama, the, with the snipping and the slicing. I don't know, I know that you guys, uh, uh, I mean, any, well, anybody who's into kind of professional audio production that works with vocals and, you know, other instruments too, will know Melodyne. I know, Rich, you pointed this out. I mean, you know, there are some people who kind of get deep into it, and it is quite a kind of deep program, but it also works. I mean, this, this every time I see it, and I've never, I've never really had to use it because I just don't do vocal production and I don't, you know, I mean, it's useful for tuning old, knackered old synths as well, amongst other many other things. But I've never really got into it. And it, every time I see it, I just, it just, it still looks like magic every time. And I just don't know how you could work on it because you're constantly in awe of what it can do. So the subtle, but and getting the subtlety across is where the skill comes, I guess, which is what these new features might well enable more. It seems. Uh, based on the videos I watched, that uh, it will enable a much more musical representation with a lot less cutting required. Basically, you had to sort of identify where the pitch in this event should be and then pitch that and then look at what happens around it and see how, how it's affected and all that. That's all sort of eliminated now and it just all seems to it, it seems to choose more intelligently where to pull the tuning point from in that waveform and ah. that blob. And uh, as they say, they separated the uh, sibilance, which makes it uh, very useful both acoustically and in terms of editing them uh, in sort of a DSing sort of fashion or an enhancing fashion, if you prefer. And uh, the tools, the macro tools that pull things into pitch and pull things into similar uh, amplitude uh, situations seem to work a lot more smoothly and a lot more musically to the point where it's not quite as fast as slapping a real-time pitch correction on something, but it could come together a lot more. I haven't used it yet, but it looks like it could come together a lot more quickly with a lot less fussing and, uh, and get you the result. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, I know Gaz has, uh, has talked about using there's this sort of incredibly complex sort of FFT dynamic EQ and rebalancing stuff in there as well. There's just there's some that. really powerful uh, business And you can do on. matching with that. You can yeah. match things that you, you bring in with that. And there's, um, no, it's ridiculously powerful. And for some people, it could be your DAW if you chose it to be. And I think they kind of think of it that way. But uh, it it's i've used it for things other than vocals i've repitched uh a song a, a chord in a song once across the multi-track using melodyne uh where the decision was made that a certain chord was to whatever it was and it needed to be less so and so this other chord would do and whatever had previously been recorded needed to conform to that they now by the way import um a conductor track or a chord track or whatever you call it that defines the harmony along the length of your piece and 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 allow you to apply that to the grid so that it will automatically follow the harmony that is already wow. in the piece of music as you're performing corrections that's another thing they've enhanced you can also customize that if you need to if it's not all within a scale or something falls outside of that scale that you'd want to preserve or whatever and it's it's incredibly deep this was a very very impressive update to me yeah wow i i, I know um charles do you find yourself reaching for this in the instances i mean i guess you know it, it must be very tempting to kind of make everything perfect because you can or everything a certain way because you can and you know half the half the skill of using something like this is knowing when not to use something like this as well i guess right yeah yeah well uh, with um with Melodyne, one of the reasons I like Melodyne uh, as opposed to other pitch correcting software is that you can you can fix things, put them in pitch, and it, they re you can really make it sound like it was not fixed. There's so many options. You, know, you can form it, shift, you pitch something like up as much as you want, and then form it, shift back down, and it sounds like it was naturally sung that way. Um, I use Melodyne every day, every day. I, I just did a mix for somebody where they 
they had this like sample of a guitar part that, that they had done a long time ago and it was just looping through the song but they wanted to have a change from a major to minor and i was able to go there and just in the chord just grab that one note shift it down and the guitar didn't sound weird at all <laughs> it sounded like it had been had it had actually been played in minor key um that that the i think that i don't know if they still call it they used to call it the dna a dna thing it was uh whatever yeah that melodyne for. dna wasn't uh, it it was uh yeah yeah melodyne dna and and i've also since uh november i think it was i switched over to doing my mixing primarily in studio one and and uh melodyne is is part of studio one now or I guess it has been for a while, and so I haven't I haven't checked to see if they if they've updated uh, Studio One yet, or if it just if you if you buy the update from Melodyne, if it automatically changes. I'll I'll, I'll search on the forums, but I've been doing this thing with with uh, automatically not pitch trying to pitch shift breaths and um, and sibilance and so forth, and even the way that you stretch things. That that's a major time saver for me because that is the first thing I do. I when I put a track into Melodyne, I'm going through it and just looking for S's and breaths and just you know cutting on either side of those because those things sound awful when you try to try to either pitch correct on a grid on some type of grid or you're doing any time stretching. It, it sounds terrible, and it's not it's not a fault of the program. It's just those those things are not really meant to be shifted. They're yeah, because really they don't they to, don't have any pitch to shift. I suppose right. Yeah. They're ambiguously pitched, and you and you have, there's there's no format that you can lock into. So, yeah, but I, I do use I use Melodyne all the time. I'll definitely do the upgrade. Definitely yeah. do the upgrade. Yeah, I know, Dave. You were saying, you know, this and uh, RX are the two things that you use a lot. I mean, it's it seems to be if you're if you do work in pro audio, whether it's production or asset preparation or fixing stuff, you know, it's it's one of those things that one should uh, probably consider having, right? Oh yeah, amazing. I mean, amazing. I've been with it since the very the very first iteration, which was absurdly expensive, and just kind of stuck with it. I, I was a couple of versions behind, obviously because of the operating system. But exactly like Chicky said, you know, it's like you have to go and chop those sibilants out because if you start moving them, you can you can hear the artifacts, and then you end up in this situation where you're trying to mask them with a bit of music, and you know they're there and they're bugging you. I mean, there's a few things in this. Uh, the voice level in macro, I thought, was really fascinating. For somebody like me with quite a weak voice, I can now go, turn them all up, or even better for everybody else, just turn them all down. Um, and to have that kind of level of consistency would be really, really neat. So, yeah, it's it's absolutely. But like I said before, you know, this and RX are the two things that I'm a demon on. I'm a demon on because you can go in, I mean, particularly with Melodyne, you can go in, you can squash the vibrato down or you can make it or you can chop the thing and make it more vibrato on one section and then you can kind of ramp it into it i mean it's just really really elaborate i defy anybody to take actually what i love about the melodyne is that you can take a performance from a vocalist or anything but really for vocalists you just take the performance and then you can deal with the i the think this is what you actually meant <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 actually and sometimes i played it back to people and they've gone jesus you're a genius and i'm like it's not me well actually no i'll say yeah it's all me but in the truth the truth is it's this i re amazing... it yeah that's interesting though isn't it i mean the, the whole idea of d divorcing the, the the two aspects i mean i suppose like i say it's it it must be quite hard because when you discover the magic of that sort of thing, you kind of feel like, oh, wow, I just want to use it a lot because it's so impressive. And it's, I guess that's the trick, isn't it? Like I said, it's hard to you to know when to not use it and when to keep what's in there. But if it, you can keep the, it going, it's sort of almost... Exactly as Chicky said, the, the beauty with this is the subtleties you can get so that people don't realise that it's been screwed with. That's That's the real key to me. You know, you can... Uh, I was told a million years ago that a load of soul singers always sing slightly flat. Uh, and you remember when all the multi-tracks came, you know, what got leaked, people like Marvin Gaye. The first thing I did was like sling them into Melodyne to just analyse them. Uh, and that was the case in a lot of, in, in, with a lot of his vocals. So, you know, ever, ever so, ever so slightly flat, but it just kind of gave that. And once you start ironing those imperfections out, things start to sound cold but with this you know you can subtly do things which yeah I, I just love it i love it 
Interesting. Well, uh, the details are, I think I've got the facts and the figures. Uh, you update costs 49 bucks for Melodyne Assistant, 99 for Melodyne Editor, and 149 for Melodyne Studio. So I guess uh, if you're registered after March 2020, it's free of charge. 30-day trial version can be downloaded at, uh, well, if you search for, I think it's Celemony. Celemony. Yeah, that sounds like it should have a do-do-do-do-do after it, doesn't it? But uh, it's just got the right number of... Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just got the right number. Um, OK, well, I think this is probably a good time to uh, have a, just a quick f uh, word from our friends over at Isotope because we have a competition for them uh, where you can win a copy of ISO Ozone 9 Advanced. Building on a 17-year legacy in audio mastering, Ozone 9 brings balance to your mix with never-before-seen processing for low-end, real-time instrument separation, and lightning-fast workflows powered by machine learning. Expect lower CPU usage and shorter startup times with Ozone 9 compared to Ozone 8. Experience fluid metering in a fully resizable environment that lets you track the most subtle details of your audio. Use more plugins at once, mix while you master without worrying about slowdowns or dropouts. And immerse yourself in a smooth, modern experience designed to keep you in your creative flow. As you can see, Ozone 9 is the fastest way to get your master off the ground. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out our other videos and head to isotope.com to learn more about mixing and mastering and to download your free trial of Ozone 9. Indeed you can, and we want to say thank you very much to them again for sponsoring the show uh, with a prize. Uh, and we have a competition again for this week. If you want to enter, you need to tweet. So you need to be on Twitter. It's pretty painless, though. What we're looking for is the hashtag release your mix. Because you've been in lockdown long enough to maybe finish a couple of tracks now. You've tried the demo version. Maybe you've already won a copy, So or you're thinking about it. So you can now release your mix as one hashtag, and the next hashtag is ozone. Nine to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. So the hashtag release your mix and the hashtag Ozone Nine. This is on Twitter to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. will get you entered into the competition. We have a winner for last week's show. Uh, this person is called now uh, Cyric Hybrid, uh, but their actual Twitter handle is at Hellfog, which I keep saying is Hellfrog, but I I think I prefer Hellfrog somehow. I don't know why. <laughs> Seems just a little bit more benign than Fog. Fog is quite demonic. Frog is just kind of cute. Anyway, but who am I? Who am I to basically question your uh, Twitter handle? Although I just have, obviously. Um, if you want to get in touch uh, at Hellfog, please do, and uh, you can win a copy of Ozone Nine. Well, you have won a copy of Ozone Nine Advance. Thank you very much to them for providing the prize. Um, Let's rewind, because one of the first topics I had, I try to introduce something that's kind of non-news based. While we've actually got some news, it seems quite a luxury to be able to not have a news based uh, topic. And this is the what collaborative working. I mean, lots of people, you know, we're sharing topic uh, um, uh, assets around the place. You know, there's various different ways. There's uh, you know, obviously um, Dropbox people use a lot. Uh, um, there's, you know, the, uh, Black. what's the other one? I'm trying to remember what they all are now. Uh, uh, Gobbler. Gobbler, yeah, there's, uh, what's the one with, uh, um, that integrates with Ableton Live? I, God, uh, I Gobbler done... still exist? Yeah, I, I think it's integrate. I, I, I use it for Slate, up to update Slate plugins, That's, yeah. but I, I don't really use it for much Right, else. it does, it, they're doing it different, it's not, it's no longer a collaborative field for DAW ah. work. It's now become sort of a distribution point for various software companies, if I ah, understand okay. correctly. Yeah, 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 but uh, Splice it was used the one to I was be, looking for. It used to be oh, yes, how but... you could share a Logic Pro project or a Pro Tools project or an Ableton project with somebody else at a distance, and you would both be able to collaborate on it in a cloud like you do with most of these other services. These yeah, days. that's right. Well, that... to originally be tailored for this purpose. That's right. Yeah, and I don't know quite a... There, there was... So I think what happened there, that Splice was the same thing. Splice was geared up for door sessions. Initially, it was collaborative on Ableton Live, and it was like version control, effectively. So it was a clever bit of... I mean, SVN or GitHub or whatever, you know, Git... There are lots of off-the-shelf kind of open source ways of managing uh, code assets, and I guess if you consider a DAW session to be a big code asset, then you could use it that way. Uh, so I just wonder what people are using. I mean, if you have to do a collaborative thing and you kind of go, oh, well, here's the session, do you share it on Dropbox? I know Yoad's all over that, but he's got a 
100 uh, well, a gigabit line so he can basically it's almost like a real-time drive for him so it's easy peasy but what about the rest of it? i don't know um rich what do you tend to use if you're in that situation sharing assets of that size across the internet if you have to I said, most often i use box.com okay i've not heard uh, of that which one I, That's which i quite which i quite like um as compared to dropbox which i don't um but Every time somebody tries to share something with me with Dropbox, I start getting warnings that all my data is going to get deleted. And if I don't spend some money, nothing's going to happen. And it's, it's, I, me and Dropbox don't get along. Box.com, on the other hand, I find incredibly easy to use and uh, productive. I know, I no longer share it in the way that I shared it with the original Gobbler, where you just basically threw it. It was supposed to collect all your files. Even if you recorded files to a drive you didn't know you recorded it to, it was supposed to find that stuff and collate it all into your upload and make all of that available as individual files. Ah. I'm not doing that. I'm, uh, I'm basically creating a, a zip file of an export session that I've created for somebody to work on and, uh, and popping a zip file up, a gigantic zip file up there for them to pull back down and unpack at the other end so that it yeah. all shows up looking like it should. And I will prepare the session. I won't just generally send them whatever I have open in front. I'll, uh, I'll spend a few hours making sure that it's what what they need. And all, all that stuff need. you forgot to rename, right? <laughs> well, not even necessarily the renaming, but just as long as it's representing in full what uh, what they need and not you know everything else you ever did to get to that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. I mean that that. I mean we used to do the same thing when we're preparing sessions to go to the mix engineers. You know, it's just like you know because you've just got uh, base to date stamp version X X X X, and you forgot to name the track, and you just went, oh, what can we record on? There's a space, and so the audio files just all end up naming you know the same synth when in fact half of them are vocals or whatever. You know, all of that stuff. If you're not template, if you're in the in the th of the wild thrust of a uh, creative session, you don't generally remember that sort of thing. I uh, know, um, Dave, what's your what's your general collaborative you know for sharing those sort of assets i mean i'm assuming sort of music i mean i guess you must be doing it with code a lot as well but you'd be using some sort of version control anyway with that right yeah i mean honestly our main two tools are dropbox haha <laughs> which is funny to hear rich's experience um but for me it's just so easy it's like dropbox right share it with these people done and vice versa and we'll have a folder with a load of stuff i mean we do pay so we are on the kind of paid tier. Uh, and then our day-to-day -day communication at the minute is all via Slack. What's yeah, Slack? Slack, that, that's an old school uh, chat system, like a, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of like a chat. Silicon thing, Valley. Right. What's it called? Sorry, I was going to say, it's really, that's really big in the Silicon Valley. Slack is really big. It is really uh, big there. It's, it's considered quite a quite a hip thing to use, actually. Ah, so. there we go. <laughs> uh, there you go. See, I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> Ahead of the yeah. curve, as, as usual. <laughs> oh, um, no, I mean, it's vital for us, you know, Chris and I, I mean, we basically have channels with everybody involved and then there are channels for different projects and, uh, yeah, I mean, you get a little uh, dialogue box that comes up and says somebody's posted in that, you see it, you can respond to it, you can archive it, you can do all sorts of stuff and actually you can send files via it and it links via Dropbox, so... You can just throw a Dropbox folder in it and uh, whoever is on the receiving end will know uh, and they can download it. So for us, it's just been, yeah, it's been really, really simple. In fact, it was funny because it was our support guy who introduced us to it maybe 18 months ago. And I think you get a certain amount of time to use it and then you have to kind of for free and then you pay for it. And at first we were like, oh, you know, another, because I don't know about you, but like people are contacting me with like a million, di di million different methods. Yeah. And sometimes I have to apologize to people go, oh, actually, I didn't turn my phone on yesterday or I don't check my texts or I'm not on WhatsApp or uh, whereas with this. So, yeah, for a while we were kind of reticent, but uh, life changing for us, life changing. Yeah. Communication you know, channels, mate. Things. Yeah. Immediately. Absolutely. Well, we use WhatsApp for shows. I mean, also that's the thing of a part. We do a show, a group, and then you know everybody. So it says, says, "I'm I'm just getting a donut. Anyone want one? Or you know, shit, my battery's run out. Can someone bring me another one? Or whatever it may be. All of that stuff kind of get, goes. And also we use um, 
uh, well, I use Dropbox a lot for asset sharing. But the other thing I use is uh, Google Drive because, I mean, you know, quite often I used to, what we used to do is upload a video to, say, uh, Vimeo, and, you know, they've got a really good commenting section so people can sort of say, oh, this bit, you know, I made a fluff there and it's time code stamped and that's really useful. But Google Drive, now I think you could start to do that sort of thing there and you just upload a video and it says it's too big as an email, do you want me to create a Google Drive link? And you go, yes, please, share it with those people. And that's quite good, although it's not version-y like, um, oh, you can, but it's not version-y in the same way. But some people perhaps don't know that Google Drive can be used to share folders and all of that sort of thing as well. So it is quite, that's quite a useful thing. I mean, although, you know, Google is in everything, so some people perhaps want to try something else, but I, I guess, I, I don't know. Um, what about you, Charles? I use it, oh. I used it too. I'm sorry. You, I sorry. Use too. I use no. Google as well, by the way. Google, Google Drive, Google. yeah, that's a good iCloud. one. cloud. I've used iCloud. As I said, I used Gobbler for years. I've used all of these things. It's very. I have a Dropbox account, not to, you know. Yeah. I, I don't. No, but I know what you mean. There's that sort of, your stuff's got, it's like, oh, hold on a minute. Is it, and Google, you can get loads of extra storage on Google for almost nothing. You know, it's like dollars, two, two bucks a month or something for an extra three mm -hmm. terabyte. I can't remember the exact figures. I wouldn't be quoting me on that. Charles, what about you do you, you then? Because, I mean, you're doing a lot of remote mix work, so presumably you have to get hold of the assets and then maybe tweak something. You know, there's a bit of two, and can you just rebounce yeah. that for me, blah, blah, blah. I mean, how, how do you tend yeah. to, to do that? Uh, so for, for mix sessions, almost exclusively Dropbox. Uh, people will send me stuff. Um, for things where I'm collaborating more, like where they're working on a session and I'm working on it, uh, there's really only only one act that I'm working with right now like that, where they have their own studio and they're and we're working on a similar software. And it's an act in California, and because of the time difference between California and the UK, uh, we're rarely working at the same time. So we're sharing everything via via Google Drive on that. They just yeah. update their folder, and then I the next day I come in to take a look at it, and there's a new guitar part or you know new vocals or whatever. Um, but yeah, paid paid Dropbox. I don't pay for Google Drive yet, but I probably will at some point. Um, but it, but the way to me a, a the most collaborative sessions really are using uh, Zoom for video and communication, and then uh, listen yeah, the, the listen to audio movers audio, listen to plugin. Yeah, yeah, that's. Good. And I share uh, in Zoom. I share screen so they can see in high definition what it is exactly I'm I'm doing. Yeah, we found a, a way to use Zoom for stereo audio in the advanced audio settings. You can switch off uh, or suppress. Uh, auto gain and uh, background noise suppression and there's also you can't turn off uh, echo cancellation but you can and use original computer audio but one of you needs to have a paid version of zoom so that's worth trying and the other thing that we've got uh, actually vmix the, the this system we use which stopped being mono so uh, stop being stereo is now stereo and in fact we're doing i should plug this because tomorrow 3 30 we're doing a live session with uh the guys over at modal electronics who are just down the road ordinarily they'd be there on the set but we haven't had anybody there for months um so he's uh, i'm doing some one with jackson because they've got their uh Argonate Wavetable uh, Synth OS 2.0. So we, he did a playback video, but we also got the stereo feed working today. So there'll be a bit of Q&A and a bit of back and forth. So if you want to hang out for that, that's 3.30 tomorrow, Thursday, the 28th uh, on YouTube stream. I guess we'll probably put it on all the other live streams as well. So you could just enjoy that. Um, but yeah, it's the, it's the, we finally figured the stereo thing, which is uh, a bloody relief, I can tell you. I can yeah. tell you, it yeah. really is. Um, <laughs> okay, crazy. so uh, yes, I thought this would be fun. Um, this was a, this was kind of when product names go wrong. Now this is a classic. That there are some things, <laughs> there are some words which, in certain languages, have, have slang uh, inferences. And that's fine, you know, we all know that certain things work in certain countries and, you know, everybody laughs at that in Russian, you know, whatever means something rude. Um, but this is a new product uh, from, uh, now what are they called? Like Alter.audio, and uh, I won't say what, it's, what it is, and you'll just have to uh, enjoy, enjoy the, the voiceover. This is Time Tosser. <laughs> Time Get in there, straight in. Of live performance. <laughs> It enables you to playfully loop and reorder any kind of musical input in real time.
So it's an interesting idea. I mean, it actually, as a thing, it seems like kind of, you know, kind of quite a cool Based product. You could reorder, reorder stereo slicing and whatnot. It's just called Time Tosser, which it it, it, <laughs> it makes sense. But you have to, there, was, there can't have been any native English individuals or if they were they were perhaps being they were they were just smirking and not maybe saying i'm not sure we could call it that let me i'm not i'm, I'm trying to have the delicately to put this uh in 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 the uk vernacular at least i don't know about other countries tossing is perhaps a, a something that a, a male uh, of the species might enjoy on their own let's leave okay. it at that <laughs> let's kind of leave it at that <laughs> uh, <laughs> owner is uh, awesome. uh, I, d I don't want to go any further than that because you know we, we try to keep these clean but the, and this looks like a great product in fact if you go on uh, they, they've got a kickstarter it's going to be launching uh may the i think it's may june the first so uh in a few days and you can i don't know how much it's going to be ultra audio uh yeah uh, presented by ultra i can hardly barely say it i just feel like i'm saying something rude but time tosser is what it is um, so uh but this uh, this is and, and i think you should check that out because it does look interesting but what this raw really brought up was can anybody think of any other instances of products that have been just named and just thinking oh if only they'd asked a uk or a or a, a japanese person or something and it would be all right i, I know that there's going to be some stories here uh, um uh, i think that charles had his hand up first yes. <laughs> well, so. there's one of the most obvious ones which only similar to this one is more of a more of an english than american sort of thing but big knob you know, oh, the mackie big knob was, yeah. yeah the mackie big knob uh, i, I guess the other another Another famous one would be the uh, it was the Chevy Nova when they you know their the Nova is one of their automobiles and they tried to sell it in Latin America but Nova means doesn't go in Spanish. Ah, no, so, yeah, no, no yeah. Nova. That's a yeah. poor. Yeah, there, there are a few. I mean, in this time of focus groups and when people obviously you know creating a new product is a big deal. It's kind of quite a big. So that maybe there's a certain amount of notoriety that one would might maybe well I get that's I think that's what Mackie were going for with the big knob you know for sure because it's a bit of a tittery sort of like tee hee. And you certainly remember it. I mean, I still remember it. I mean, I don't know how many years ago it came out, but I just remember when we and it really is a great big rotary encoder knob. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, there are others. I don't know. I, I, there, there are there are legion. I know, Dave. I remember. I remember when you were doing the uh, string machine. I think I came up with the acronym, didn't I? Because what was it? The analog. Um, what did I say? The analog, analog replica string ensemble. That's right. <laughs> ass. And actually, right up to the wire, it was still going to be called ass, but we were being distributed by Avid at the time, and they kind of hauled us into a meeting and talked about, you know, share prices, diving and all sorts of things. And uh, <laughs> we weren't allowed to call it that. And they, they even went through the patch names because uh, there's a great patch designer, Hans-Jörg Scheffler, who did uh, a patch called Bow Job, and they wouldn't let that through. Uh, it was quite, it was quite, I'm, I'm glad actually with hindsight. I mean, we thought it was infantile and very funny at the time, but you know, some humor kind of doesn't, it doesn't work well with time, does it? It's a bit like, I don't know, it's like 70s mother-in-law jokes, isn't it? You know, it kind of doesn't. Yeah. So, yeah, with hindsight, I'm glad. But we've, we've had, we've had, i got to say, on this one, Hugo, uh, our programmer, our main engineer, he, uh, I showed him this. We had a really good guffaw, and he came back with the best line. He said, I think the tagline should have been a new way to mess with your instrument, the time topic. <laughs> <laughs> that that is yes, genius. That. That's genius. But they even, should um, even the fat boy years ago. You know, we got <clears> we got <throat> some stick for that because some people thought we'd named it after one of the bombs that was dropped on Japan. Oh in the God, war, yeah, of course. Yeah. But it wasn't. It was like the tall boy and the fat man. So they were wrong and we were right. But nonetheless, uh, but I mean, it's just face, some some yeah some associations are just hard to shake, and you got that's why you got to be careful, obviously, you know, because you wouldn't yeah, want to. Yeah, 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 totally. Particularly now, where every you know everything is completely global. I, uh, my favourite one was I was patching a synth for a company, and they were asking me to do analog replicas in this synth, 
and I was naming them as such. You know, I didn't realise that everything was going to get truncated down to a certain amount of character. So I would done, you know, like Slave to the Rhythm called, which was called Analog Slave. And then I did another one called Analog <laughs> Waiting, which was like a de-influence. And we all know what it got truncated to, didn't it? Anal Slave and Anal Waiting. And it was really hard for me because they were Italian and it was really difficult for me. And, they, and also very well-dressed. And uh, it was really <laughs> difficult for a scruffy British urchin like me to kind of go, yeah, it's not working. So in the end, I didn't bother. <laughs> well, that, that, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of truncating of analog that we see in thumbnails and you know certain YouTube titles on phones. You know, we've seen all of that stuff before. It's 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 it always great for that sort of thing. But yeah, I, I, that, there are tons. I mean, I don't know, Rich. Like I say, there, there aren't that many, um, and a lot, a lot oh, of times... Oh, there's a pretty rich minefield. <laughs> okay. <in the> products. <laughs> but uh, as companies go, it's hard to top Moog across their history for lousy product names. Starting, uh, I guess you could go about as far back as you want, but Little Fatty is one of my least favorites, followed by the by the by whatever the Rack Fatty was, and that, that whole... There was a period in the middle there where they're, they've come around lately, actually, in their more recent instruments. They've been, they've been compensating. Show a lot more sense, yeah. but uh, <laughs> there was a period there where their instrument, you know, even the liberation was like, what, really? You know, you're really going to go there, huh? So, um, but anyway. Uh, yeah, no, that's, that's an interesting that's point. I mean, that's a sign of the mind. times, the isn't it? fatty but, ones. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. There, And it was when the pH was sort of like really... Yeah, like really? I didn't mind Fat Boy as as Dave was just referencing at all because it was F A T Fat Boy, wasn't it? Was it not? Or no, we did the P H. We did the Cardinal C H A T Boy, but oh, it was. Yeah. But, I don't know. <laughs> it's great that coming from that the kind of it's represented what the product stuff. did in some kind of bizarre way, whereas Little Fatty really just seems to reference somebody rolling a spliff. I don't know. It, well, maybe that's what they were aiming for. You know, maybe maybe that's I would what think. they're doing. Yeah, I would think, but that's that's an interesting marketing decision. <laughs> yeah, well, I th I think Moog's Mo 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 sorry's marketing uh, has gone through an enormous number of changes, and now 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 yeah. they're very now nowadays it's really interesting because I mean we've dealt with various good people along days. the way. Yeah, it's good. Uh, I mean, it's very it, it, it's getting. Th this is the thing when when a brand becomes a certain has a certain kind of uh inference and it you know whatever then it becomes much more protected so in some ways you're not going to get that so much and you kind of lose the playfulness a little bit and i i mean i like them some of the mo products but i also think some of their marketing recently has been like you know this synth will philosophically change your life for the better and i just think that is toss it really is to ah, use, good use the the there. thank you thank you very much i felt it was appropriate at that time yeah. what, uh, what's, what's the other guy eric what was his name eric Eric Barber, Metasonics, yeah, he just didn't bother. Yeah, yeah, that just used to cause like I, I remember like every name. It's like, oh, let's go and see what he's done this time. Yeah, we couldn't. I mean, we because we'd cover that stuff and we just couldn't say it. I mean, it was just it's so. It's, I mean, and he went for that. He was a really funny bloke, actually, very dry, but also slightly. I mean, and he had this. He was almost because I used to talk to him about this, and he had this kind of almost like a contempt that he says, "How, how, how." Uh, how horrible can I make this that people will still go for it? And it's part of, it's almost part of the cachet of owning this really offensively graphic and named thing. I don't know what's happened. I mean, he, he, he you know, had, had a few issues here and there with distribution and, you know, those things. But, and I don't know whether he's still going, but his stuff is still quite legendary. These yellow things with really kind of graphic cartoons and terrible, terrible parameter names. And it was just, you know, it was, you just couldn't, you couldn't actually do a tutorial because every other word would be something that would have to be censored. <laughs> Which was kind of... <laughs> I just thought, but fair play, you know. I mean, there's nothing, you know. I, I'm glad. I'm glad it existed, but it was quite difficult to cover, shall we say? <laughs> but um, yeah, so this is the uh, uh, the the what is it? Time tosser. That's right. By Alter Audio. Don't know. Uh, You'll have to wait till June the first, which I think uh, what's that? Friday? Is it Friday or is it Monday? I don't even know. How many days in May? Well, no idea. Uh, it's uh, the first. Everyone's the first is. Right. I think the first is on Monday. I think. Uh, Monday, right? There we go. So Monday, yeah. you'll be able to find uh, out. Sorry, I was going to say though about about uh, this uh, time thing. Um, yeah, I, this even is you, you can't say I, it either. <laughs> I know this is this is something though. I would use. I would definitely use this live. This is something I would use live because wow, uh, a lot of what it's doing, I'm kind of doing using my chaos pad. 
and not and the chaos pad does a lot of stuff quite well but it's not it, it well this thing has just been beaten up so bad that it's falling apart but um but something like this if it's you know if it's roadworthy I definitely yeah. would use something like this. That's Why? interesting. It's I, quite I, terrifying because the thought of putting an entire mix or sections of the mix that are going through, a, you know, I don't know, 15k PA system through this, uh, through uh, basically in and out on a phono. Eighty dollars. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it on the mix, but I would do it. I definitely do it as oh, a stereo stereo return. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. but, but I mean, I'm, I'm doing lots of stuff where I'm doing these like timed, <laughs> uh, you know, like chopping up of things, and and this this is part of my my live shtick i guess is sort of like do like a remix thing live for anybody i work with and so i, I would use something like that definitely I, yeah. I definitely would use it that would be interesting very cool to have. yeah i mean i'll go back to the yeah. picture of it It looks like a cool thing uh and it almost worth owning just to have that logo on it really i think uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah just, you got a coin actually just you know because it's like you go to production rehearsals and just say yeah well can i set this up i've got this really cool thing that's just and then everybody's going hey have you seen the time tosser you know it's just like, <laughs> excellent it goes i just want to i want to get a t-shirt for that yeah, yeah. no wonder, actually well this this could be the thing obviously kickstarter i think they would maybe they should have a tier where you can't buy the thing you can just buy a time tosser t-shirt then they'd sell they might sell more t-shirts than they do actually units who yeah. knows <laughs> it's entirely possible <laughs> they need to sponsor the show. Yeah, I think yes. that's what they need to do. Yes. Well, we could we could run the entire mix through it, and I could flip it up, and you know, I could you toss time live. Live as you are. Yeah. <laughs> toss time with the tossers. Oh God, let's not. <laughs> we're, we're, well, we're allowed to because it's a product name, I suppose. I don't know. Yeah. It feels yeah. it feels wrong somehow. Um, yeah. Well, let's see. Well, um, uh, I was I've already mentioned about the Argonate firmware, uh, and oh, I did I. We never got around to this, Rich, and I think it's something I will maybe just throw this in at the end because this is uh, the Blue Cat Axiom, uh, which is the guitar effects, which I know you're really into, and we've tried to get it in the show, but fortunately, there's been, well, not fortunately, but there's been other more pressing items that have pushed it out of the way. So let's have it now. Welcome to Axiom by Blue Cat Audio, an open multi effects processor and fully customizable dual amp simulator for guitar and bass. Set up two parallel amp simulations. Each with its own unique pre-amplifier effects section. Cool. It seems very good for clean stuff. I mean, that's the only stuff that they've gone there. But I mean, I know you play guitar and you, you definitely have been singing its praises. And there's uh, there's I been a thing. there's been a real quantum leap in uh, uh, guitar live guitar processing. I mean, since back since the sort of line six days, it, it's like there's been a thing. I don't know what it is. In the same way that there was with synth modeling, it suddenly got like super good. And it feels like Blue Cat are one of those people that have taken that. And that there's uh, is it two notes or what? Who are the other guys? There's a um, I forgot what they're called now, but they do really good stuff as well. But this one floats your boat, Rich, right? Very much so. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, first of all, he's a guitarist, so he's got a personal stake in making this thing great anyway. Um, but it is, it, I'm going to start from the, the only thing that really matters, which is it sounds amazing. It really just does sound much more dimensional than most of the guitar modelers I hear, which sound typically very 2D to me and very sort of, they do what they do very well, but in a very sort of a flat way. And uh, this thing has <clears throat> so many great amp models. So much ability to modify the amp models, both in terms of the amplification, the speaker modeling, uh, all of that. But And he's got this tremendous collection of, of effects that are included with it in stuff you would use on guitars, you know, uh, before an amplifier or effects you would use in a studio after said guitar amplifier. And there's slots for all of that. And in addition to all of that, your entire plugins folder, VST and AU, <clears throat> is available to any point in the signal chain anywhere within any of the plugins. Does it use? Does it use a? Uh, does it have a sort of custom audio interface for kind of getting the, the the right impedance guitar signal in, or is it just purely software thing? It's purely so he doesn't right. have a hard a companion piece of hardware, but um, my interface works fine. Uh, you know, feeding line in through my interface to it, uh, it seems to be quite happy with that signal, uh, both in terms of level and what what's coming in, and it sounds 
awesome. And then on top of that, he's got this thing. He's got a whole bunch of different things, but one of them is called Re-Guitar, which has guitar pickup models. It allows me to strap on my Telecaster and put up a whole se- collection of double coil pickups to audition. And he also has virtual body depth. Uh, you could actually create a half hollow body sound out wow. of, and these things sound fantastic, and they're all storable within your overall your bigger picture. They they emphasize quite often the the dual amp thing, and it's true. There's an A amp and a B amp, and you can cross fade between them and do whatever you want to do there. I just like the fact that each one of those two sides, if you choose to use them both, sounds phenomenal and has all these great options including, as I said, your whole plugins folder. Mm. So that's where I stuck the uh, Valhalla thing today. That's what I was using to audition Valhalla, was I put it into into Axiom, uh, hosted it on the output, and uh, went to town. It's just, it sounds to me the best of all of the ones I've used, and it's really got a tremendous number of... Would that be, would that be, a, would people be using that maybe live? I mean, I know because a lot of people use the Kemper live. Sure. I mean, that's really, you know, that's, that owns the space of the actual dedicated hardware yes, box. Yeah. Uh, uh, and they're so small, <laughs> so you don't have to lug them around. I don't know if I'm calling this thing a Kemper killer. I never really considered it. It's not that you couldn't host it in a laptop and use it just like that. It's just that wasn't sort of my focus. Uh, the Kemper is a great product and, and understandable why people are touring with them. And we have at times that I think oh, will be again in the future. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Kempers. I think the, uh, the the product I was looking at is Two Notes Engineering that has a kind of uh, uh, a, a, a component, a caption box that I think is like a power soak, but it also just does kind of, it's got some DSP, it's got a reactive load box, virtual cabinet attenuator and ILO. Apparently those sound really good as well. Um, I know, well, I don't... And, and, uh, Sorry, I'm sorry. Just one last thing. And if you're talking about input paths, and if you're using a piezo-driven input, there's a amazing radial product called PZDI that allows you to take in piezo pickups with proper loading and lack of mid-range fragility and wackiness. And, yeah, uh, radial makes some great stuff. That's very true. Yeah. I know. I guess, uh, Ch- Chicky, you probably come across a, a variety of things when you're touring with, you know, and doing the productions because they're. I think you do some music with guitars in, right, from time to time. <laughs> I, yeah. Do, do. What are people? What are people using live instead of big racks of amps and and you know s- stuff that shifts air that you find? Well, the let's see. The last tour that I did. Well, uh, Howard Howard Jones is touring. Um, Robin is using. Uh, he's using a Line Six. Uh, is it the he- not the Helicon? Uh, Helix or yeah, I can't Helix. What it's that's called. right. Yeah, yeah. He's using that. Uh, uh, that does sound great. Um, I do. I uh, and then before that, the last tour I did with guitars was uh, was Prince. That was a right. while back. Yeah. And and there were there were there's nothing digital on that stage at all. And he was he was very uh, very much Marshall Stacks and that's it. Yeah. But uh, but but yeah, I, I love Axiom. And one thing um, I don't think Richard mentioned this, but um, there's uh, you can load load in IRs of cabs into this as well. Ah, so, like, okay. if you have a have a particular cab that you you like the sound of, but you want to try different amps on it, it's you know as long as you have an IR of it or make an IR of it, you can load those in very easily. Um, it's very it's like a, it's like a it's like a modular amp or modular synth amp thing. It's really cool. It sounds fantastic. I use I use that and I use uh, uh, my UA Fender Tweed. Those are like the only the only two I. I use everything ah, else right. is, is good, but you know, oh, actually I have to say empire is quite good. And I don't know so that one. Want, empire. What a great name. Empire. Yeah. Empire is the, it, it was in previous versions of studio one. It was okay. But in 4.6, which is, I think the latest version, uh, it's fantastic. It sounds ah, really, okay. Really Modeling. Good. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I remember, um, I think we got, a, a, um, they were focusing on that when we did a presentation with them sometime. Oh, uh, Dave, yeah. I mean, you're probably not doing a lot of guitar work, I'd imagine, but some synths sound good for processing that sort of thing. I mean, do you have any reamping or amping kind of, uh, paths that you tend to go for? Nope. Oh, all right. Thanks. Great, isn't it? <laughs> Great show. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you very much, everybody. For watching. <laughs> Hammer down. No, but I have actually. Kent has just fixed a guitar pedal that I bought in America in 1979. 
and I thought it was long dead and it had, it's got a lot of emotional, a sentimental attachment and I took it to Kent ages ago and then when I spoke to him the other day he said, mate, I've got your guitar effects thing working. But it was an old Electro Harmonics, uh, it was called a trigger filter and I really liked it on keyboards and stuff. Ah, uh, yeah. So I'm gonna now going to use it on the cloud. In fact, it's interesting because there were three chips in it. I think two of them had gone, but the third chip, the one that hadn't gone, was rare as rocking horse shite. Isn't that like a, is it like and a that, mutron? Is it a mutron type thing? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah just kind of big knob, big knob and uh, a switch. Yeah. And yeah, it's kind of up and a down. Wow. An envelope follower, basically. But uh, yeah, it just had a really, inter- uh, you know, uh, uh, it was a very sentimental thing that I bought in the States uh, when I was 16. And uh, yeah, so it's been brilliant. Uh, I'm really looking forward to getting that. So yeah, but that's about the closest I'll ever come to. There's a bit of me that would like to buy a guitar and just kind of learn a few chords and then just kind of string them together. Yeah, I, well, yeah, I, I've heard, I've heard it could be. It's quite popular. Um, but, well, I've, I've actually got, a, I've got a 1963 Burns London, uh, which I've had in the family, as it were, since I was first in a band. Uh, I, I probably mentioned this before, but my guitarist. Uh, bought it and he used to play it, and it would always stick around in the rehearsal space and uh, which was in my friend's front room and that's where we used to hang out so when we weren't rehearsing I always used to play the guitar and I ended up owning it and I've I'm really you know I'm really really attached to it and I've lent it to kind of various uh, sisters and brothers-in-law's kids who've wanted to play guitar and they've so it's, it's been through a number of hands and I've got it back with me now I wish I had the original uh, machine heads and the original tremolo because it would be worth an absolute mint because it's older than I am basically which is always nice I think with that sort of thing and it's not it's just not a Fender or any of those things it's a it's a Brit it's the same pickups as uh, Brian May uses those split sonic ones the little so he t- he he uses those in his guitars that you know legendarily his dad built and it's got uh, so you can split the the top the trebles the top strings and the bass strings uh, it's got the wild dog setting which is always a guitar with a wild dog setting is excellent you know what what, <laughs> what more do you need in so life do you, do you play it? do i play uh, i have played uh, i used to play a bit songwriting i'm not really i mean my finger i no not not just not anymore but i, I find it really frustrating because occasionally i'll go around to a guitarist's house and that you know the, the guitars will be there and i kind of pick them up and i feel like I should be able to play it. And then they just go, for Christ's sake, Spears, just put it back. We Uh-oh, did, didn't we, we did the topic, didn't we did the topic of the, the guitarist in the room. It's like the drummer just tapping away. The guitarist in the room, unamplified, just going plinky, 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 plink. They're rich. You're ready to fulfill that stereotype for us. Have you, have you, are you amped up or are you, you're just, that's your, uh, is that a, a vintage or is that a kind of, what, what telly is that? Is that a, tell us of the heritage. Come on. This is uh, not a vintage guitar, but it's designed to be like a vintage guitar, and they use old parts wherever they can, and it's a company in Nashville called Bluesman Vintage. Ah, okay. And I oh. treated myself to this guitar a few years ago after I played one. And uh, Fell in love. It's my daily, my daily thing now. But hmm. There's, yeah, there is that's something Valhalla that's, right there. I can't hear it. There, you're, he's in Valhalla. Oh, no, we okay, can't. Okay. Sorry, uh, Rich is uh, Rich is lost in music. He's just played a note, and it's okay. still ringing out. I think uh, it is. It is. You're a sandwich. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> still ringing out. Hold on. Why, why aren't you hearing that? Okay. Anyway. I don't know. We should be able to do this because now, I mean, you won't be getting stereo on this because I need to give you a special link for that. But uh, it will. It should work. It's because it has to come into oh. inputs. It doesn't work in the way that you think it works with uh, inputs because. Physical inputs one and two only go into the live stream. You can't have any other inputs unless you somehow map it to virtual inputs, and those are the ones that the webcam or the web thing finds. It's the same with Skype. It's the same with most of those Zoom. It's the same. You can't sort of go, oh, but I use five and six. It's like, unlucky fella. Yeah, that's it. Mm. So I'm afraid (laughs) not. So as much as I'd love to hear your endless reverb tale, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of that sort of thing. But there's, there's something about a telly and a strat, isn't there? There's those sounds that only they can make. I mean, because you get metal guitars, the J, you know, all of that, and it's like it just doesn't doesn't have that. There's that tone of a of a really nice telly that just. Uh, what were you? Oh, look, is that three three five? Hollow bodies. Uh, that's a Sheraton. It's oh, an okay. original Sheraton, made in America though. 
we're we're go we are going off piece a bit. I think I, we might lose yeah. our subscribership if we talk too much about guitars. <laughs> I don't know. It's, true, it's, true. it's 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 a shrewd move. I don't know. Or we could cross over. I mean, maybe the world is crying out for more guitar talk, but perhaps not on this show. Uh, we'll see. But that's been it's been great fun as ever. I want to say um, thanks once again to Isotope for providing the prize. I should actually just plug that one more time. Uh, if you want to win a copy of Ozone Nine Advance, which will help you with your mix, we're looking for the uh, release your mix hashtag or one word and the hashtag ozone nine that's the number to at sonic state and at isotope inc uh, that's a tweet and if you tweet that you will be uh, entered um assuming you spell it right um but uh, it should be uh, you'll be able to see it check the video but yeah so i don't know how the chat's been going i've got lots and lots of chat going up but it doesn't seem to be syncing up with what i'm seeing on the individual chat windows but i thought i'd give it a try worth a go eh? and i have no idea what happened with the facebook video because i went live with that and that's that's a sort of uh, yeah i don't quite know how that's worked either so it's all a little bit seat of the pants but stay tuned uh next week what's coming up next well i'm going to get back onto the pulsar 23 which is over there i have also way behind the curve with the artoria uh keystep pro which i will probably have a play with uh, and we've got, uh, Gaz is looking at the, the uh, Roland VR1 HD, which is the video switcher, which I think we're going to do a little bit more of that tech because it's something that you will hopefully find useful, some of you. And uh, what else? I think we've got a matriarch somewhere in the pipes, a, a Moog matriarch. And other stuff too. Just stay tuned. There's more coming. We'll, we'll be back on track. Um, Dave, thank you so much for joining us. Your camera yeah. looks great this week, mate. It's got depth of field it's got detail it's got yeah everything you need from a camera effect, right? it's got synths it's got hair it's got it's everything say, yeah hair look here you go and there's more over there look. oh 100 wow. that's oh. nice have you have you sorted out your keyboard mm. supply yet have you managed to find a single key? oh that's nice we got your I keyboard like supply nice. sorted what you had one? three of them didn't you with different uh, missing keys so have you managed to make one that works now what was that on? That was I on this remember. show. <laughs> Never mind. I, 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 let's just move on. But well, Dave, thank you very much for joining us. It was. It's been uh, a QWERTY keyboard, I should add. You remember now? Ah, yes, yes, yeah, yes. There we yes. go. Phew, thank goodness for that. Oh, look at that beautiful, pristine. Yeah, I had to buy. I had to buy a second-hand one, and like this isn't British, and the British one has got a massive, great return. Whereas this one isn't. This needs a little bit more finesse, which I'm rubbish at. So, so you're relearning your typing skills. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of yeah. Delete, it's, delete, it's, delete, 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 delete. Yeah. <laughs> really, and yeah, it's a bit frustrating. But no, now, now I'm on the latest OS. I can get one of those kind of super magic-y things or whatever they're called with the extended mm -hmm. keyboard because I need the extended for the shortcuts. Anyway, yeah. enough of that. Good for you. But yeah. well, thanks for joining us. It's been a pleasure as ever. And also, Mr. Charles Thank Chicky Reeves, chickyandcoco.com. Glad you could join us. Uh, I do hope that you're able to survive in a small room with how many valves that you said? Uh, how many valves? <laughs> total? Over 100 valves. 100 in that. And then I've got. I've got a bunch of V72 preamps and oh. UA stuff. Yeah, a lot of preamps. I do. Wow. I run all my keyboards into all that stuff because I love the way. It, Sense, hot, hot, hot. Tubes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you'll learn just quickly, great. just yeah. very quickly. You'll you'll chuckle because it's obviously it's been hot, but in the evening this this will cool down in here and whatnot. And I haven't got aircon, but when it was cooler, I kept coming into this room. I mean, it is chaos, but I kept coming into this room every morning thinking, why is it so hot? And sometimes I come up and do a few things at midnight. It's like, why is it so hot? Why is it so hot? I realised for about three days I'd left the Jupiter Eight on. And the CS80. Uh, on. Yeah, that'll do it. They got oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like huge heat sink. Huge on the back heat sink. Like... Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Toasting marshmallows. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, and thank you, Charles. Anyway, it's been a pleasure Love to have it. you as well. And of course, Mr. Richard Hilton over there in the US. Uh, I could leave you to your reverie with uh, Valhalla and uh, your telly, your lovely telly, in the in the background. But uh, thanks for joining us, Rich. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Always great. Okay, well, it's this time now. We uh, head off. Don't forget, actually, tomorrow, 3.30, I forgot to mention, we're doing another live stream where we'll be online with Modal and the Argon 8 and the version 2 software. This is sort of, I guess this is the state of things to come. You know, normally we'd have them in here, but we're going to do it online um, just because that's the way that we do things right now. I wonder if we'll ever go back. So I, probably subsequently, as, as, as we get further and further into lockdown and away from this, 
all of this will probably just be a massive pile of empty cardboard boxes growing in height, <laughs> and the back of the room will gradually roar up, and it'll just be basically this. But we'll, we'll see. But thank you very much for joining us, everybody. It's been a pleasure as ever, and uh, we'll say goodbye as we wave off into the sunset, and hopefully this will all um, it'll work nicely. So thanks very much, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye now. <laughs>